Hey, 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 hi, everybody. How are you today? Welcome to your uh, your uh, friendly <laughs> your friendly stock channel, Stock Markets with Bruce. I'm Uncle Bruce. It says so right here, so it must be true. Welcome, everybody, to the show. Today's date, November the 21st. It's Tuesday, November the 21st, 2023, two days from now, Thanksgiving in November America. 20, Congratulations 20, to all my American friends. And uh, best wishes to you and all your family members and pals and childhood friends if you're heading to your hometown and, you know, the memories. Uh, Thanksgiving, it's a big deal in the USA. Canada, not so much. It's, it's, it's a welcome holiday. It's early October for us, um, if I recall, or, or, yeah, usually in October. Um, because our growing season is shorter than your growing season in the southern part of the America. Canadian fields were cleared off uh, for wheat and barley and all that stuff a long time ago. And so we're into winter up here. But hey, it's okay. Whatever works, works. Canadians love love Thanksgiving because they get their own, and then they kind of celebrate the American Thanksgiving as kind of an excuse to not work so hard. Um, and we all love watching NFL football, so Canadians love the American Thanksgiving. It's a, it's an added bonus. It's just fun. Um, so welcome all to the show, and I sure hope you're having a great week. Um, today's markets. The question is, will they add another winning session to the win streak that we've got going again? Another win streak is going on. The Dow is at um, 35,161. At the moment, it's down 64 points, but it's had a, a nice little run lately. The question is, will the run uh, continue? That's you know, that's all we want to know. Um let me double check here and see if I can make this pop up uh, like that. There we go. I've got a little thing happening on my screen, so just bear with me now as I will show you. I'm going to show you the last um, month or so if I can. I'll do it like this. Show you a mini contract on the Dow here. Boom. And then I'm going to do another one right there. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. You, this should be fun. Uh, hang on one second. I'll pop these up for you guys so we can... We can watch it, look at it together. Boom. Okay. You get sound effects and extra charge on this show. You've probably noticed that. You regulars, you know how, how great the sound effects are. <laughs> welcome one. Welcome all to the party, pal. Uh, it's nice to have you here. And uh, uh, let's see if this party is going to keep on going over on Wall Street. Or are they going to run out of booze? <laughs> Take a look at this uh, right here. Uh, don't mind my bald head over here. Okay, so there is the Dow Jones uh, contract for the last month, right there, one month. So from down here, um, you know, we we backed off a little bit to under what was it under thirty three thousand over to there, and now look at it 35,160. Look at that streak there with just a bit of a there was a little pause here, you know, a little dip, but then another pop up and another leveling off. But these are like these are shallow runs. Now, this chart makes it look a lot more dramatic. Uh, this is three months now. Here you go, last three months. So that's from August, September, October, November. And there's that, that sell-off that we had, and it stopped. And now up we go. Why did it stop? Because we um, got the inflation number uh, moderating. Uh, the Federal Reserve is happy to maintain rates. And now the bond market is absolutely convinced it's over. Uh, the bond market is, oh, yeah, we're not going to see any more higher rates. Inflation's going down now. The the, the Federal Reserve's going to lower rates next year. Oh, for sure they will. Because as soon as they sense that the economy's going to slow down, ah, they're going to lower their rates. Um, I think they're wrong. Um, uh, the Fed will do all that, but not in a hurry. This is not an eight-second attention span Federal Reserve. They're not going to work that way. Uh, they're going to wait, make sure that inflation has run its course. And what has not happened yet, what has not truly happened in the um, economy, is all these raises that we've been noticing by large union groups and, and, and employment groups, uh, raises that people have been getting at, at, at work finally after years of being oppressed by their employers, that hasn't filtered in the economy yet. 
uh, United Auto Workers are getting, what, a 30% pay raise over four years? It's over four years. It's not like they're getting 30% starting today and we have to adjust all of our figures from five years ago. No, it's going forward. There's this upward pressure on expenses going forward. Um, your grocery bill has is up now, okay? The cost of your groceries will not go back to where they were in 2019. You're not going to see deflation at the food level. You'll be lucky if the prices stay where they are now, except the problem is a box of Kellogg's cornflakes or Cheerios or other products you buy from spaghetti sauce to ketchup to whatever, chances are what you're paying for, uh, for each item off the shelf, you're getting less of the item because they've shrinkflationed you. They've reduced the size of a product that you now pay just as much for or more for. And so General Foods and 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 uh, Kraft and, and all the other majors, you think they're going to cut prices and, and eat their own profits? No way. They're, they know you're getting a pay raise. You can afford our mustard. You can afford our ketchup. You can afford our barbecue sauce. You can afford whatever it is we sell. The freezer fruit section, your meat department, your cheese and dairy area. Ice cream isn't coming down in price. And keep in mind, there are a lot of companies out there, uh, apart from the majors that produce food, there are many, many, many medium-sized companies around North America that produce a lot of different products. Their costs have gone up too. It's not like they've gouged you by saying, oh, yeah, well, we're, we're, we're making an extra 5% profit and we're not going to reduce our prices. Thank you very much. No, their costs have gone up as well because – where they manufacture their goods, they pay more to their employees. They're paying more for delivery. They're paying more for insurance on their factories. They're paying more property taxes where they are because governments, people, and organizations are passing on cost increases. This is not stopping. We have not gone through an entire cycle of higher prices yet. We have yet to do it. And now we're going to get the, I call it the, my, 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 word is a secondary glitch a secondary wave of inflation the, the the echo and that is where higher prices meant price increases which means higher labor costs which means labor feels richer is theoretically better off but they're not because now labor has to spend more or ever going forward for all the goods and services how many people out there and how many times have you seen the stories on your local media national media people working two and three jobs and they can't make it work. They have to go to the food bank to get food because they can't afford the full grocery bill and the utility and the rent and the gas. And the, there's, there's a huge problem. And there's, there's, I keep hearing about two Americas. It's the same in Canada. It's the same in the UK, in Germany. There are two everythings all over the place. It's not an American problem, but most of my audience is from the U S there are two sets of people out there and it's not fair to all the people out there because that's not true there are 20 different kinds of people 50 different kinds of people. but the two they talk about are the haves and the have-nots those who have more money than they need to get by on and those who don't um, i say that we have had and will always have the down and outers who are the bottom 10 percent, the bottom five percent that are homeless have all kinds of issues, and it runs the gamut from, from, from addiction to mental issues to, to injuries to whatever. There's the down and outers, okay? And there's a zillion tragic stories there. And then you have the sort of 5% up from the bottom 5 10% to the 50 percentile range from low, low middle class to barely middle class to just over middle middle class before you get to the upper middle class. That is the biggest segment of the United States and Canada and Britain and France and everywhere else. This, this is where most of the world is. And it goes from folks who are very poor, the seniors out there who are getting crushed with expenses, medical, everything, out, rent, food, and you go on and on and on. And then families of, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and up that are just getting crushed. This is the other, the uh, that half. And then there's the other half that make more than they need to get by. And the economy has to run on uh, 
for everybody. It has to work for all. And the problem here is uh, the top the top enders are going are, are going to contribute money to super PACs to get politicians and keep politicians in power that make it great for them. And they feel that if it's good for me, I can afford to help the poor. And the poor are going, I don't feel your help. I, I, you guys have been making billions on, on the whole system, and we're still poor. And we've always been poor. And it looks like we'll always stay poor. And when there is extra cash going into government's hands, it's just going to fix potholes. And it's going to fix a, a, a running down uh, 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 country from from water systems to 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 uh, to electrical grids to uh, highways to uh, uh, you name it uh, infrastructure I mean it's just in infrastructure is crumbling and has to be maintained and governments can't even maintain let alone grow and expand and so you have this back and forth back and forth and so what's going to happen with the economy what's going to happen with the market what's going to happen with um, everyone's bottom line I I uh, I can only say that if you're on the bottom half, it's going to get worse. It's not getting any better. I'm sorry. Inflation is not going away. This wave, this echo of inflation that is going to pilfer through is going to hurt the poor even more because we're going to see higher prices because of higher costs. The, the talk lately has been, oh, supply chains are fixed now and there's some lower prices in the supply chain. That's about to end. There's going to be a new wave of price increases from the supply chain, all the raises that the employees are getting everywhere. And their costs are going to be now passed on to the next wave, the next level, the next level, until it gets to the retail level where all of us have to buy stuff. And whether a car goes up another 500 in cost or whether a refrigerator is $100 more expensive or it's a toaster oven goes up six bucks or whether it's um, a dozen eggs goes up 15 cents. You add it all up across the board and you're going to see five, six, seven, eight percent inflation. You're not going to see 2% inflation. There's no way in hell you're going to have 2% inflation if employees are getting raises they deserve of eight to 10 to 12 to 15% for the next year or two or three or four and higher. They deserve much, much more, but that's gonna be put into the economy. We've had, prior to the interest rate rises, we had docile inflation, but we also had the middle class getting crushed and Americans in general have been experience a, experiencing a lower standard of living bit by bit by bit, slice after slice. It doesn't matter who your president is, doesn't matter who your congressman is. It doesn't matter who your senator is. The slice of, of uh, standard living for Americans, Canadians, and others has been dropping. We do note and we do see the Kardashians doing very well. And we see sports stars doing, generally speaking, very well. We see entertainers, in some cases, doing very well. What you don't see are the 90% of the athletes, the 90% of the rock and rollers out there and pop star wannabes and rapper wannabes. You don't see them struggling. You don't see it because they don't get the media attention. The media attention is on the successful and the fantastically doing really well. Dumb Money is a classic movie that you should watch where you see the very well-to-do, how they live, and how the others are doing. And you also note that the very well-to-do, when they lose money, they still are doing well. Very, very well to do, even though they lose money. And the little guys who make money don't make the billions. They make thousands and tens of thousands, in some cases hundreds of thousands. But to turn someone from a middle-class person to a multimillionaire is a one-off, a very, very rare event. And dumb money is exactly that. You get to see Roaring Kitty putting everything on the line that most people would never have done and leveraging it up and having it work for him. He was, he's a one-off. There's so few that were like that. The vast majority of GameStop players, dumb money players, are still doing their day jobs. They're still plugging away. They're still trying to get by. Inflation is unfortunately not going away. Interest rates are not gonna go back to zero. The Fed is not gonna hurry up and lower interest rates. Neither is Europe, neither is uh, uh, other countries. China is a mess. And the permutations of that have not yet fully been realized.
by the rest of us. We will pay a price for China's misery, unfortunately, because China will not be buying as much stuff from the Western world, whether it's iron ore, copper, uh, basic raw materials to make stuff or services, it, it just won't be as much. And that will affect a lot of China's trading partners, which is everybody, uh, third world countries, second world countries, and for third world, uh, first world countries. And that means the world economy will not be able to surge much higher, much faster. And that is going to catch companies short. That's where public companies will come out and go, yeah, gee, uh, uh, we made our money for the last quarter, uh, but uh, the next quarter we're not going to, we have to lower our projections. Uh, our sales are off. Um, Lowe's, Home Depot, now Best Buy, Walmart, uh, Target. Uh, it goes on and on. It'll be everybody. They will all announce the same thing. They will say the same thing. And the stock market will eventually go, wait, wait, whoa, 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 hold on. Why am I buying stock at 40 times earnings? These guys can't double their earnings in the next two years and get the PE multiple to 20. This PE multiple is going to stay at 40 and go higher if they make less money next year than last year. The PE multiple will be higher than 40. It'll be 45. If the stock drops 20%, the PE multiple will go down to 30, 35. But if they don't make the money they're supposed to make, the, the PE multiple will be, will be back to 40. Price versus earnings. If the earnings aren't there, the price of the stock has to drop. If it doesn't drop, that means the PE multiple is going up. And that's bad. That's bad. You need a low PE multiple to attract money into stocks. I noticed the other day, I talked to you about IBM, how they're ripping off their employees by changing their pension plan. You might note that uh, that um, uh, if you have the time, you check out the quote on good old IBM. Um, four months ago, if you bought IBM stock in the one... 20s and 130s, something like that, you're getting a 5% yield on your money. You buy IBM now at 152, you're getting 4.3% yield on your money. You're not getting as much money in the in, in yield in your, your dividend payout. It's just the same amount of money per share. They didn't cut the dividend, but the stock price is higher. And so you have to pay more to get that dividend, which means your yield has gone down. Well, just like 10-year treasuries, they were offering, and you could got you could have got 5.1% on your money on a 10-year treasury. Now it's 4.4. Because the bond market is convinced that the Fed is going to not raise rates anymore. I'm I'm not so sure about that. I don't know if the Fed will raise rates soon but I don't see them lowering rates anytime soon because they're going to stay back and go, uh, 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 uh. we're going to put the boots to this. We want inflation to come down and we see factors that could make inflation come back up again. The Goldilocks scenario is only a limited time offer because when you get the three different bowls of oatmeal in the Goldilocks story, at the moment she tastes all three, one of them is just right. But an hour later, had she come into the room an hour later, all of them would have been too cold because goat meal keeps cooling off. Uh, three hours later, all the, all the oatmeal is cold, ice cold. The markets are in the Goldilocks scenario uh, about a week or two ago. That won't last. The Goldilocks scenario will change out and will get nasty again. The question is, if it is, who gets hit the most and where should I put my money? Now, tonight, after the bell, the big story of this market. It'll be dominated by one stock and one stock only, NVIDIA. Tonight, after the bell, NVIDIA releases their latest quarterly financials. The stock has already reacted rather nicely in the last couple of weeks in a lot of anticipation of what, what could be happening. Um, it's at 503-ish right now. I think it was or maybe 499 right now. It, it was as high as 505 this morning. The all-time high is 505. So it's right around its all-time high. The question now will be, coming into tonight, whatever they say and however they say it, how will the market react to NVIDIA? Will the market say, look, uh, we ran this thing up here in the last month to its all-time high. Uh, sell on the news. 
we're, we're, we're going to take profits now. Um, there are our hedge funds who bought NVIDIA at $450 and it's now 505 or 500 or 495. They're up. They're all up and they're up on leverage trades. Don't forget. Remember, you and I can see stock prices on the stock market. You and I can see contract prices on the options market. That's a leveraged business. The, the options market is a leveraged uh, trade. <clears throat> but you and I cannot get values and dollar amounts and risk factors in the in the derivatives market which is unregulated by any agency anywhere in the world derivatives are not a regulated business not the options derivatives i talk about those are regulated option positions and here's maximums and all that sort of stuff but over on the <clears throat> over the counter derivatives market where trillions trade hands every day there is no government oversight. So we don't know. We don't know uh, which hedge funds out there are long or short, uh, hold naked positions, covered positions, and how much. We don't know. And if NVIDIA tonight goes from 500 to 400 or from 500 to 600, we don't know who's winning and losing in this whole deal. We, we don't. We don't know. We'll find out over the next few days and weeks because if NVIDIA does go down to 350, the 350, 400 on a disappointing comment, outlook, potential comment, of, you know, the sky might be lighter blue than darker blue. Oh, wow, well, we got to sell this stuff. If the stock takes a dump, could there be hedge funds out there so over leveraged on an upside move? that they have now gone 50 to 1 leverage, 40 to 1 leverage, and are wiped out? Could it be that we have another one of these uh, uh, Bank of Switzerland, Swiss Bank positions that blew up over a year and a half ago when we had a hedge fund, a private hedge fund that was tiny, caused a 4 or $5 billion nightmare <clears throat> for certain banks, including Nomura, uh, uh, Bank of Japan area, one of the banks in Japan, a couple of banks in Switzerland, and, and elsewhere. Could there be 10, could there be 10 hedge funds that all blow up and collectively lose a um, hundred, a trillion dollars between them, you know, a hundred billion each. On the other hand, stock goes up to $650. Goes the other way. It's great. I think it's fantastic. How many losers are there there? There'll be winners. If the stock goes down, there'll be winners. If the stock goes up, there'll be winners. There'll be losers if it goes down. There'll be losers if it goes up. The question is, if you're a winner, and you're supposed to collect $10 billion on your winning bet, can you be paid off? Can the loser cough up the money? And there's the question. Uh, is, the, is the insurance in place to pay off winners or not? If this stock only fluctuates $25 each way, up or down, then not too much may happen. On the other hand, as each day goes by, all next week, the week after, the week after, all these derivatives run out of time, just like contracts, they shrink. And again, there may well be a slow motion meltdown of certain funds. Remember, this is November the 21st. Why do I tell you that? Why do I want you to think this? There's only 40 days left in the year. Do you know how many people's bonuses are on the line in the next 40 years? Uh, 40 days, pardon me. There's 40 days left. And there are bonuses on the line for the next 40 days for the whole year. And so there are positions out there that have been crafted to mature out between now and the 15th of December or something like that, or the end of the year. And there could well be a whole bunch of desperado fund managers, asset managers, who've had a wishy-washy year up until a month ago. And now they're trying to score the home run for the year on nvidia and the future of the market this rally we've had they want to cash in the big ticket to get there fifty thousand dollar bonus two hundred thousand dollar bonus eight hundred thousand dollar bonus one million two million five million ten million twenty million there are billions of dollars of bonus money on the table maybe tens of billions of dollars on the table from the multi-trillions that are out there that will be valued on December 31 for the end year price. 
and there are pension fund, mutual fund, hedge funds, ETFs, insurance people, banking people, private investors, uh, invest managers who invest and manage private individuals' money. There is so much on the line for bonus payouts right now for the next 40 days. And each day is one day less to get the score, to get the print in the account to score your bonus. Now, some folks, they get monthly bonuses. They don't get an annual. They only get a monthly. What you made for me in January last January, you got your dough already. February, you got your bonus. If you got one, you got one. If you didn't, you didn't. March, April, May, June. So there are those who have no pressure for year end. It's just one month. It's November, December. I get a bonus or not in November. I get a bonus or not in December. Doesn't matter. Where others get quarterly bonuses, others get semi-annual, others get annual. And so then we find out who gets fired and who gets promoted. Because at the end of the year, you got the report card. How did you do regarding the market as a whole. If the Dow went up 6% for the year and you only made 3% for your, your fund, you're underperforming. You're gone. You might be gone. The other hand, if you only made 1% more than the street, you might still get canned because it was not good enough. There are some managers out there who are under the understanding that if I don't do 50% more than the stock market, I could be in jeopardy and lose my job. That is entirely possible. And then there are other managers out there who've done really well and are doing very nicely who are leaving their firms at the end of the year anyway. Why? They've made so much money in the last two years that they've piled up 10, 20, 30, 50 million of their own dough. They're going to start their own fund. They're not going to work for Joe Schmuck and, and these 20 other billionaires. They're going to they're going to say to these billionaires, I now I'm starting my own my very own fund, which I'm funding with $25 million, and I'm going to raise another $250 million on top of that. I'm going to manage $250, $300 million to start my little mac micro fund. But it's me, and it's out of my house, or it's out of a small office with three or four of my best pals who we were working together in this fund. We're all leaving to create our own fund. There are others of these kinds of guys who are going to fund their companies with $25 to $50 million with their partners, and then they're going to attract Five billion dollars of capital to manage through dozens of contacts. And here's another hedge fund in business. Do not be surprised. There will be hundreds of additional new hedge funds created, maybe thousands around the world starting January. This is a big business and there's some serious money on the line and there are some serious returns here. Um, Look, if you can do well, if you if you uh, if you can do well writing options with me here, uh, or you you hear about these bonuses and you know these multi million dollar bonuses being paid out to some of these players, some are going to get twenty million, a hundred million dollar bonuses, fifty million dollar bonuses. What are they fighting for? What why are they working so hard and killing themselves to try to make this kind of money? One of the reasons is because they might be interested in buying a house like this. Check this place out. Here's a lovely little backyard. This is Vero Beach, Florida. That's a saltwater swimming pool you're looking at right there. This is a 6,000 square foot, seven bedroom house with a beautiful kitchen. Check out that counter there. That is a lit quartz counter that uh, shows off that aqua blue color. Isn't that cool? Um, this house is for sale. You can buy a house like this in Vero Beach, Florida for $16 million. To be accurate, $15.9 million. It's for sale if you want to get it. This house is owned by someone who considers this house to be their summer getaway house. This is not even the main residence of the owner of this house. The owner of this house treats this as the summer getaway. This is one of five homes the individual has owned in, in his current portfolio of real estate. This is one of five private homes this individual owns and this one is 16 million dollars okay am i getting through to you the other four are located in miami colorado uh new york and i'm trying to remember the other place five homes or they had four maybe they had four now they have three they're gonna have three if they sell this uh that's the kind of lifestyle that some folks are shooting for 
in this business where they manage billions of dollars and are trying to pull out 50 to 100 million a year to live this kind of lifestyle to have that house as a second or third house the owner of this house <clears throat> that's selling this house is the former ceo of norwegian cruise lines frank del rio this is frank del rio's fourth home soon to be gone if he sells it he'll only have three colorado miami and new york and Frank Del Rio has hauled in about a hundred, hundred fifty million dollars uh, from stock sales of Norwegian over the last 10, 15 years. He's been paid a million, two million a year uh, as CEO. He retired last June, he's sixty-six now, I think. I think he's sixty-six, um, and uh, he's he's dropping one of his properties. If he sells this house for about sixteen million, he'll clear about seven before taxes on it because he bought it and renovated it and furnished it and put a lot into it but he'll walk away with some dough on it for those who buy it anyone who buys this house if they make it a primary residence sure you can make this your primary home but chances are someone who buys this house might be a part-time resident for maybe two or three months a year so if you got the kind of cash that can afford a 16 million dollar house and only live in it for one or two months three months a year how much dough have you really got uh, you've got to have access to a private jet you or either charter one or you own one and or you have multiple other properties and if you're in the fund managing business then you are likely a new yorker uh likely um or you're a londoner and this could be your your you know your u.s vacation home the chances are you're an american uh probably hanging out uh, in new york this is not the individual I'm talking about. This is just our fire department going for a little ride this morning. Anyway, um, welcome to the party, pal. There are people out there who are looking to make that kind of money to um, get that kind of property and maintain that kind of lifestyle. And I'm saying to those of you who are here with me this morning, um, in your own little world that you're in, I'm trying to up your up you and your game to show you the right way and the proper way to increase your wealth by being an option writer um, and whether you're writing pure covered calls or whether you're you're uh, uh, producing a, a deep in the money call options like poor man covered calls uh, cash secured puts or whether you're doing credit spreads like iron condors uh, there's many many a way for you to participate in this business and get your piece of the action to make a difference to your life and Step number one would be lower your cost of living by raising revenue and paying off debt. That's costing you a lot of interest. Getting to the point where you could be interest and, and, and debt free uh, would be step number two. So first, get rid of those expensive credit debits. Number two, get rid of all your, your IOUs and now build asset value. If, if you get to the point where you can actually um, offload your credit card debts, um for some of you the magic the magic moment in your immediate future is to lower your cost of living by five hundred dollars a month eight hundred dollars a month you've got three or four credit cards they're costing you two to four hundred a month each to carry as minimum payments um you've got man money that you can manage inside your 401k inside an ira uh, <clears throat> maybe you can manage you have some wealth that you've uh, you've got some money that you saved and that you're trying to grow it to pay off these credit cards you've been able to or you could borrow money against equity in your house or against your life insurance for capital outside the tax man you can borrow money against your 401k for example and use that capital outside the 401k to grow revenue to pay down the debt pay off the loan of the 401k and reduce your cost of living by six seven eight hundred a month after tax and now sit there and go i can generate five thousand a month after having paid off this debt um we can live off of that we can easily live off of that and i can keep managing this capital and grow it quit my career job that i'm stuck at i'll never get a promo beyond what i've got i've reached a, a vp level and I've reached a supervisory level. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a manager of 10 employees, but I'm never going to be the department manager. I've topped out. 
and I don't like my job and I don't like the management above me. I don't want to be with them anyway. I would really like to be on my own. And if I could just make this kind of money outside of here, boy, would I be a happy camper. And so <clears throat> with adjustments to your net worth <clears throat> to rearrange your finances and now be an option writer for income, you might well get to that level. You're not going to buy that house yet. Uh, but you're going to live in your house and a lot more comfortably than you're living in it now. You may find <clears throat> that you've reached a point where, Bruce, I am bringing in enough capital to quit my day job. <clears throat> I've reduced my cost of living. And my wife and I are empty nesters, and we have figured out we could right now get out of the city, state, where we are, higher taxation state, higher taxation whatever. We can sell our house for a top dollar because the market's pretty good around here. We're going to take advantage of that move, pay off the mortgages, and walk away with the equity. And we're going to turn around and we're going to move to where we want to be. We're going to move to a retirement community that we've always aspired to get to, and we're just going to be renters. We're going to use the equity of our house now uh, might be another hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, and we're going to add that to our pot, and we're going to manage that money along with our ex other assets, and we're going to bring in more money managing that net asset than we are making, than have been making. Period. And we're adding to that capital, and we're going to max out our four hundred one ks and 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 stay ahead of that from a retirement point of view. But we're in our forties right now, and we can cash in now. We can cash in early and rearrange ourselves. And we just want to be in um, Arizona, California, Florida, Texas, uh, wherever you want to be. And we're going to get there, but we're not going to go all in. We're not going to pay overpay for real estate there. We're not going to overpay for it. We're going to uh, uh, just find a place to rent on an annual basis for now, month to month. It might be an apartment. It might be, it'd be nice, but it, it's not going to be 10,000 a month lifestyle. We're going to reduce the cost of our lifestyle. Reduce the cost, of, uh, reduce the size of our footprint of our stuff because we're going to offload a bunch of stuff. We're downsizing and we're going to live off of our money, make our money, allow our money to carry us beyond carrying us and grow our asset base. And a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, we might at that point buy our next home, but we might not. It depends. We may find in a year or two, we don't like this area. We love the state we're in now, but not this neighborhood or this region. Or we find that, nope, we don't really want to be here in this state. We want to be in that state. We want to be living over there. Or, uh, you know what? We've, we've, we've caught the bug like Uncle Bruce has with Auntie Jen. We want to travel for a couple of years. We've been stuck in our cubicles and our daily grinds for years and years. The kids are at school or college or they're graduating or blah, blah, blah. We're empty nesters. We want to travel for a couple of years. And so we're just going to carry an apartment, a townhouse, whatever. We're going to have one of our kids live in it while we're gone and just look after our stuff. And we're going to hit the road. We're going to be gone for like two month vacays, come home for a month and gone for two months and gone for three, home for three weeks and gone for another three months. We're going to do that and be in business at the same time with Uncle Bruce, wherever we are. That could be your future. Um, that house in Vero Beach, uh, I don't see any of my viewers going there in the near future. But then again, were you ever the CEO of a publicly traded company worth $20 billion? No. So let, let's get back to reality. Uh, uh, you can enjoy Vero Beach, Florida, certainly at, in an Airbnb uh, if that's what you want to do. Uh, or you could do a six-month rental of a fully furnished house. You got that kind of cash flow? Lock yourself up. Uh, on the other hand, you might decide, no, no, Bruce, and I'm buying a used RV, and I'm hitting the road. We're, we're hitting the road for two years. Uh, we've got to see a lot of stuff here over the next two years. We're on the road, and uh, we're going to spend a month at a time at this campground or in this region, in this region, whatever you want. Uh, welcome to the party, pal. I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm just so glad you, uh, many of you here have found the answers you're looking for or you understand where it is you can get to now in the next three months, six months, 12 months, and so on. And you're already on the road to that level. You've taken a bunch of my classes. You've been here for several months or years. You've learned a lot about this market. 
You are so much wiser regarding how to handle your own assets and your own money now. You're part of the Discord channel that, that this channel is associated with, although I'm not, not on it. In other words, you're talking to each other and you're hanging out with Uncle B. You look me up for one-on-ones and just say, I want to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. My wife and I would like to sit down with you. We want to tell you where we were. We want to tell you where we are. We want to tell you where we want to get to. What are your thoughts about how we are going to handle all of this? Well, and then you're going to give me a snapshot of where you're at, what you got, and then I will try to throw you throw my two bits in. But I might end up sending you guys to a tax advisor. I might have to send you to a, uh, a realtor. Uh, I might have to send you to uh, I don't know what an insurance, a life insurance expert that knows the value of your insurance. I don't know until I talk to you. I have no idea, but. We'll figure it out. And um, if I can make you a better option writer than you are now, you're going to make a ton of money. Um, by the way, a quick little thing I want to mention today. I want to talk to you quickly about something called stink bids and stink offers. I mention this all the time. People mention this all the time, but many of you might not know what this is. And some of you think you know what it is, but you don't realize just how important this really is because you forget that, oh, yeah, stink bid, stink offers. I should really be paying attention to this. If you're thinking of writing a condor, creating a condor position on, on Qs or SPY or Apple or, or Adobe or any stock out there, you have to remember that when you do a condor, there are four contracts that are involved in doing an iron condor. And what you pay for stock contracts and what you get for contracts will determine the, the win or loss percentage and monies into your pocket. And a condor position is only four contracts to start with. There are four contracts you have to deal with when it's all over. Because there are times where you will create a condor and then you will do a rollover of a condor, which is an eight contract transaction where you adjust the four you have into four additional. And then ultimately you close out the condor with another four option transaction. So you are talking about the possibility of four in, four out. Four in, four out, four in, four out, which is 16 contracts. And if you are so much as out five cents a contract in pricing, you are costing yourself tens of thousands of dollars a year in lost income. It is hugely important you understand the nuances of stink bids and stink offers and to sometimes not do a trade because it doesn't, the, the, the offers and bids aren't there. You have to sometimes step away and say, no, I'm not doing that trade. It's not worth it to me. To me, it's not worth it. I need to have a better trade. Stink bid, stink offers are highly important. If you're thinking of doing 20 condors, that's 80 contracts in, 80 contracts out. You miss a, a, a condor trade by $0.05 cents on each position. Uh, that's 160 calls at $5 a call that you've given away. That's $800 you just kissed off in profits to you. You can't afford to lose $800 on one condor position 20 at a time. You, you cannot do that. You do that twice a month, all year round, you're, you're losing $1,600 a month. That's $20,000 a year you're giving away. You, that's unacceptable. So my classes to understand stink bid, stink offers, the 90-10 rule, um, are incredibly important and you cannot poo-poo -poo that because you will nickel and dime yourself into the poorhouse if you underestimate the power of these. One-on-ones might help straighten you out um, to get you on the right track. So keep that in mind. Check out my classes. Consider a one-on-one -on -one and we'll get you on the right track. Welcome everybody to the show. I think we are open for business, if I'm not mistaken, because this guy named Larry Titus has just hit the bells for us. And that means that you guys are about to get, I hope, a whole lot richer than you were yesterday. And uh, I couldn't think of a nicer group of people that should be getting filthy rich than you guys. Um, because if I can help you folks get out of that middle class range into the very upper middle class or higher range, uh, I have more than done my job. And you might not be able to afford to buy homes of this caliber. You might not be able to buy this kind of a place. 
well, you know what? Um, you might be able to, with a couple of other relatives and friends and whatnot, be able to rent a place like this for a couple of weeks and hang out at a place like this for a little while. Or you can hang out at the nearby resort near these homes and enjoy the, the lifestyle of this neighborhood for a while. So, hey, uh, let's get going and uh, let's get you richer. Thank you, guys, so very much. Welcome all to the par party. Welcome all to the show. Thank you so much for saying hi and, and uh, to each other, to me, and uh, uh, passing on knowledge to each other. I'm, I'm grateful you're here. Thank you for the thumbs ups this morning. If you've been doing that already, I think 75 have come in. We have 155 of you here. So there is no question that 90 of you are absolute slackers and are not helping me out today because you're probably so enthralled by my messages. So that's okay. I forgive you, but you got five minutes. Hit the bell, hit, hit the bell and hit the thumbs up for me now. Hit the thumbs up for me now. And get me some momentum on the thumbs up button, please. <laughs> Richard, I just stole <coughs> some SoFi at 651. Oh, uh, how could you? Mandu number five, I'm here. Uh, thank you, my friend. I'm late, but I'm number 75. Thank you, my friend. And what a pleasure it was to meet you in uh, Jersey. It was great. Thank you, guys. Uh, way to go, Richard. JR, Larry, Marie is here. Um, uh, Farmalus. Uh, Alberto, let's get the moolah, baby. Uh, Richard is here as well. Richard Gonzalez is here. Dean is here. Many of you are here. I thank you so much for popping in. Those of you who are members of this channel, you know what you mean to me. And Jennifer, it's unspeakable what you mean to us. I, we can't, we cannot begin to thank you. Those of you who are following us uh, as uh, as lurkers or subscribers. Uh, subscriber lurkers, we love you too, but please, please become a member of this channel. Um, do us a favor, become a member so that we can stay on the air longer. And also, I have to say, I don't want to sound so pretentious, but do yourself a favor, become a Gold Bagel member immediately of this channel uh, right up here and uh, get your hands on a daily trade tip that I bring out every morning. Get, get viewing the Trade Alert show that I do before this show even starts. And Wednesday nights, join me either live or on rerun. You can do all this on rerun. Join me Wednesday nights, prime time live with Uncle Bruce, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Wednesday nights, we talk your trades. You tell me what you're doing, what you're thinking of doing, where you're at. We'll try to help you out that way as well. Become a Gold Bagel member and get rewarded for the membership. It's 25 bucks a month to YouTube. Of which seventeen dollars and fifty cents lands in uh, in my YouTube account, um, and uh, the more members we get that uh, are every month part of the family, I can count on certainty of income. Uh, whatever adver advertising revenue we get is additional. It's not all that much, but the memberships are what it's about, and I'm motivated to help you make money. So I want to make you more money than it costs you to be a member of this channel. I mean, come on, twenty five dollars a month. That's what a Barely a dollar a trading day is what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to make you more than a buck a day to be here during Monday to Friday. So come on. Uh, thank you guys for stepping up. Those of you who are, who are chilling members at 10 a month and are becoming Gold Bagel members for 15 a month additional, if you become a member during the month, you don't get charged the entire amount. You get charged a pro-rated pro amount between now and the end of the current month you're in. And then the next month's billing cycle, you're automatically uh, charged $25 by YouTube. Uh, so for a lot of you, it's easy to switch in to, and step up to the gold bagel level immediately and start getting your hands on the tra daily trading op uh, opportunities that uh, I bring you. Thank you all so much for your uh, wonderful participation, support, and loyalty to the cause. We're really Glad you're here. We are down 62 on the Dow. We're down 9.9 .9 on S&P, and we're down 58 on the NASDAQ, and now the Dow is down 91. So we're going red right now on these uh, uh, on these markets. A uh, headline just came across here. A record share of people applying for car loans were rejected in 2023. A New York Fed survey is saying. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Fed minutes are going to be released, I think, today. Apparently, U.S. stocks open lower as the S&P 500's winning streak is being threatened ahead of Fed minutes. So that might be why the market's a little edgy right now. Um, the fact that we've had such a winning streak and we're so much higher than we were a 
few months ago. We're overdue for a correction of some point. The higher this market goes, the bigger and more severe the correction will be. And that will take some stocks down dramatically. It could be that today is the crescendo of the market, that NVIDIA will release phenomenal numbers tonight. It could be that NVIDIA makes fantastic overtures and that the stock in the aftermarket rises 20, 30, 40, $50 only to fall back to where it was by tomorrow morning. And then we have a down 300-point session on the Dow right off the get-go. Because you sell on the news. What's more, what, what's more to look forward to if NVIDIA delivers good news? People will go, well, that was great. NVIDIA made a bunch more money. I'm going to sell make my profits now. Well, everybody thinks the same thing. Zzz, down goes the market. Nothing holds up the market, you know. Only the buyers of the day hold up the market not buyers from yesterday or last week. If pension funds bought a bunch of NVIDIA last week and a bunch of other stock in the last week, and it has no bearing on what the stock's value is today or tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or beyond. It is only the buying of the moment that keeps a market where a market is. And if for whatever silly reason, buyers all of a sudden decide, I'm not buying stock right now. I'm not, I'm not going to buy. I'm going to buy stock maybe next week. I'm not interested in buying stock exactly this minute. There's a buyer strike. We have a drop in the market because there are sellers looking for buyers. Sellers will find a buyer the lower they offer stock. It's the same in real estate. You get a hot neighborhood where prices of houses have gone up and up and up and up. Uh, there's a bidding war. But if you get a neighborhood where houses are for sale all over the place, you get a selling war. And you have realtors advising clients. Hey, Leah, listen, this house, uh, it was uh, it was seven hundred thousand two years ago. It went up to one point one million last year. Right now, the guy's asking nine hundred ninety five thousand. I think he could put a bid in there for maybe eight ninety five. He might take it. He's desperate. Uh, this is the real estate market. Well, this is the stock market. The stock market is exactly the same thing, but it's on a minute to minute, second by second basis. And if there are hedge funds out there, operators of hedge funds sitting on billions and billions of dollars of positions leveraged to the nines and they get the impression that we might be topping out in this market and it's time for me to sell now before the nvidia news comes out i'm better off selling now than waiting until tomorrow they sell today and if there are more sellers today than buyers today we go down and why would a bunch of people want to come into the market right now a few hours, five, six, seven hours before NVIDIA talks. Wouldn't they have been wiser to come into NVIDIA in this market two weeks ago, three weeks ago, knowing that release day is coming up? Yeah, that would make sense. But, hey, not everybody is that smart and not everyone is that focused. There are idiots out there who buy on the day of earnings, thinking that I'm going to buy NVIDIA now and it's going to go up $100 tonight and I'm going to be rich. They might be right. They might not be right. Uh, they might be terribly wrong. The buyer strike is on. If it kicks in because of profit taking and tax loss selling starting Monday, uh, maybe it's starting today for some folks. There are people right now taking tax loss positions because they got to wait 31 days to buy back in. They want out now to buy back in in late December. That could be going on. Well, maybe the market will have a down day today. We're down 100 on the Dow. We're down 10 on S&P. We're down 47 on NASDAQ. We're not getting crushed here, but we're a yeah, quarter point, third of a point lower to start the show. There you are. Adobe is up 182. With all the negative, the Adobe is actually higher. Go figure. Uh, for those of you considering this Adobe rollover we talked about today on the trade alert, you might want to look into it. Check those options of yours and see what you can do. Anyway, there you have it. Send me an email. Keep me posted how you're doing, and I'll do the best I can to fill you in on uh, what your ideas and options could be, what your positions could be like, and so on and so forth and so forth and so on. Uh, thank you all for popping in here, joining uh, myself. Jen will be by in a bit to say hi to you. We have right now 87 thumbs ups. I was, I've, been managed, I've managed to attract 12 thumbs ups. Um, there are 166 of you watching. Um, there's about 80 slackers around here. Uh, don't let Strickland catch you in the hallway without having given us a thumbs up. You're going to get uh, that little pink slip. You don't want the pink slip from Strickland. No, no, it's true. He's never had hair. That's, that is true. Uh, thank you again 
for helping out with this channel's uh, promotion and, and exposure. I love you guys. Um, I think it might be time. The wisest thing we can do right now uh, with this market is to not ignore the Knights of Knee. Uh, we must put the Knee emojis out there. For those of you who are newbies, you have no idea what we're talking about. If you are a brand new member of this channel, you have got to get over to your emoji section and start pushing out the Knights of Knee emojis uh, because we let the Knights of Knee know that we are aware of their presence, their power, their dominance, and we honor the Knights of Knee. Don't make the Knights of Knee angry. It will just hurt your portfolio. There's no point in doing that. So Knee, 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 Knee. Make sure when you hit these emojis, open your windows and yell at the top of your lungs in your neighborhood, Knee, Knee, Knee. Let everyone know around you that you too are observing the power of the Knights of knee and you're not going to get caught shorthanded when the market turns the other direction it is so important to know and look at the who knows what it is i am talking about look at the knee emojis coming in here we have richard carlin coming in here we have uh, we've got uh, white feather neat 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 knee. jr neat 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 dean neat 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 luca neat 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 zeta state neat neat karen neat 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 splare you cannot ignore the knights of knee larry titus the big e they're all here they're all watching they're all aware that it is time for the knights of knee to be honored alex knows they all know and i can tell you these folks have probably already hit the thumbs up button for us thank you alberto and everyone else knee, 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 knee. Smart people, these people. Uh, is it any wonder why they make the most money on options trading than most others? They know what they're doing. You know who to respect and honor. You must, you must honor the Knights of Knee. Uh, the Knee. Uh, knights. Uh, Sharon Butler, Steve Butler, Knee, 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 Knee. Exactly, sir. Exactly correct. Uh, we must honor the Knights of Knee. <laughs> I know there are people who come across this channel and go, what is this moron doing with these people? What 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 kind of a channel is this? What, how, how, what why do they hang out with this guy? Why would you want to be a member of a channel where they go, nee, nee? Uh, well, after you're here a while, you figure it out. Uh, when you're a newbie, you kind of go, I'm not so sure. Am I is this the right place for me? Because uh, you know, he has no charts, he has no fancy graphs, he just talks all the time. Uh, why why would I want to hang out with this guy? Uh Although he, he, he was correct on his ideas on certain things. And, uh, you know, oil is down 39 cents and it's not $104 a barrel, it's 77. He was kind of right on the oil thing. And uh, maybe, uh, look, uh, Joe Oliver, uh, Olivia, Joe Oliver, um, uh, sorry for slacking, Uncle B. I got my thumbs in there. I've uh, been gone for a few days on vacation. I'm gl glad, good to see your bagel familia. Thank you, my friend. John Anderson, me, 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 uh, and a white feather. Sorry, I can't yell out the window. The neighbors already make fun of my uh, tinfoil hat. <laughs> uh, Luca, uh, so about uh, my yesterday's Idiot of the Day Award. Uh, how you doing there, buddy? How's it going? I can't remember. I, 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 Luca, you have to remind me because uh, every day it's a new day. I have, to, I have to wipe the slate clean and start from scratch. Um, if there's something I, need, I can help you with, you let me know. Um, I'm trying desperately to... Uh, Stay on top of this uh, ever-changing market. We have 96 thumbs ups now, guys. Thank you for coming in here. 163 watching. 96 thumbs ups are in. We're almost at 100. Keep them going, guys. We'll go into triple digits here at any time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is absolutely a wonderful thing. 614 on Adobe now, uh, trying to hold again. Uh, the high uh, might be in this level. Let me just double check here. Get this all straightened out. 615 is a high of the day on Adobe, which is the high of the year, 52-week range. Uh, do you want to be long, Adobe, going into the long weekend coming up with uh, Thanksgiving? Really? I don't know about that. I'm really not sure about that. Um, it may or may not be the right move. Uh, for those of you who are um, um, also not aware, I announced yesterday uh, that... Um, Class number 17 is coming up. Lesson 17, December the 9th, live from Palm Desert, California. Jen and I will be running lesson number 17, and we are going to be talking about 
how to fix option trades that are going the wrong direction. Uh, we're going to talk about how to recover from option losing trades and make them winning trades, how to minimize losses, how to maximize gains. We're talking all kinds of rollover possibilities, whether you're into covered calls, poor man covered calls, cash secured puts, condors, credit spreads, it doesn't matter. We're going into a bunch of stuff. And also that class is your perfect opportunity to ask questions live while I'm working the board and Jen is reading the comments out loud about a particular trade or particular spreads or particular rollover strategies that you need help with. If you want in to be a member of the live class for December the 9th, Saturday, December 9th uh, at noon Eastern, you need to make a $150 donation to my PayPal account. Link is down below. Send me a private email and say, Uncle Bruce, I've just sent you 150 bucks. I'm in. The email that I'm writing you from is the email you send the link to for the live class. And I will take care of you. After the class is over, <clears throat> the class is getting will be edited by, uh, by Emily, our editor. And then a final edited version of the class will then be sent to your address, your email address, for you to enjoy as many times as you like going forward. So those of you regulars, you all know the routine. You know how this works. You send him 150 bucks. You tell him you're in the class. He adds you to the class list and you get your copy of the class after it's all over. And you're that much smarter than the rest of the option planet out there. And look, I have really good news for you guys. Okay. If you're an option, if you want to be an option writer, like the group that's here now, I have good news for you. Really good news. <clears throat> Hang on one second. Oh, that feels good. The good news is this. More and more players, more and more gamblers are coming into the option market every day, every week, every month. The options business, the exchange in Chicago where the options trade, the volumes are rising all the time, all the time all the time. Why? Because platform trading outfits that let you use this to write options and trade options and credit spreads, they make it so easy for newbies to get into the option game that many, 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 many millions of people are coming into this business and will keep coming into this option side thinking that they can hit a home run ball. They think they can buy a lottery ticket as an as in they can buy a call option and they can make 5, 10, 100 times their money. They really believe this. They're being hoodwinked or being encouraged or, or, or whatever into coming into this market. They're not necessarily uh, dumb people. They're very, they're very, in many cases, very smart people, but they are not as well-educated in the options market as you are as you are they don't understand the overall nuances of how options depreciate over time they don't believe it or they don't think it's going to happen to them they believe that when they get into the option market they are going to do it right catch the, the exact moment in time to move in and they're going to catch the exact moment in time to be a seller typical reach for the stars investment strategy that so many day traders talk about and so many others talk about and unfortunately it doesn't work and in the long run the gamblers on the option floor are the ones who get taken to the cleaners the reality is this you can watch videos on your phone on your computer all about option uh, all about day traders all about option traders and you can see the same thing happen in in casinos around the world where you can watch people play slot machines and try to tell you that they make nothing but money playing the slots because what you don't see on slot machine videos are all the losses they have until they get to a bonus round and then you only see bonus round coverage of a slot machine where, oh, I just bet $50 and I got the bonus round. And they pick up two grand in a payoff, but they don't tell you they're 
14 grand into that machine or into the session or for the last three weeks they've lost fifteen thousand dollars in slot machines they just got two back they're trying to live off the views of those videos to make up for their losses and they'll never get enough views to pay it here in the option business <clears throat> there are people coming into the option market not from america <clears throat> not well, let's put it this way not just america not just canada we're talking about the around the world. You are about to witness in the next five years, and it's happening now, every day for the next five, ten years. This is this is not going to stop, and this will continue on. It's invisible. You don't notice it on a second-by-second -second basis, but it is happening. There are millions and millions and millions of people around the world who make $10,000 a year, $12,000 a year, $15,000 a year, $8,000 a year. They, 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 they make money, but they don't make Western world money, okay? They're not making America money. They're not making Canada money and so on. But they are generating some revenues. And there are going to be, and there are now, I know it, I'm certain of it, there are gamblers where you've got uh, one guy who has his best friend and their brothers are pooling together 200 bucks each into $800,000 into an account uh, in one of their names, however they're doing it, through a platform on their phones in Brazil, in Venezuela, in uh, the Congo, in Nigeria, in South Africa, in... Uh, Name a hundred other countries, okay, that are not G20, 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 G40 countries. Name a hundred of them everywhere in the Pacific, in Asia, in, 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 in Africa, in, in the Middle East, <clears throat> in the, in, you name it, all right? And we're talking amounts from 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 to $5,000. Millions, tens of millions of these are coming into this market and will continue to come in. And some of them day trade stock. They just, they just buy... A, they buy penny stock and get wiped out, or, or they buy a stock under $10 a share. They buy uh, S&P 500 stocks. They buy, uh, they, they, they try to day trade uh, AI. They try to day trade uh, SoFi. They try to trade game, whatever. Stock, 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 in, out, in, out, in, out. Because they just love the speed of the business. They love the uh, easiness of being able to trade stocks in, in this market. And now they're graduating into options. It's only natural because they realize, oh, wow, well, we could use $1,000 and we could buy options. We could buy an option on, uh, on AI. We could buy an option on um, something else and, or the SPY index or the triple Qs. We can get into trades that the big boys get in in New York. One contract, one contract, two contracts, three contracts. And we're talking tens of millions of these guys okay Th this is coming this is happening there will soon be gazillions of traders out there from around the planet coming into these markets if not already here and they don't know what they're doing they don't understand the nuances of the contracts that they're going long on they have no idea what a condor is they don't have the capital to create poor man covered call strategies they don't have the capital right covered calls they don't have the money they only have the money to play the options. And this, some will buy puts, some will buy calls. They'll, they'll, they'll try this and that. But they're going to get nailed badly. Some will win. There will be winners because without winners, you don't have slot machines. You have to have a slot machine once in a while pay off with the bells going off. And so there will be winners in India, Pakistan, uh, Mali. There'll be winners in Myanmar. There'll be winners in Vietnam. There'll be winners in Indonesia, the Philippines. There'll be winners in in, in Somalia and in Sudan in Egypt in in Tunisia. There'll be winners. Winner. There'll be winners, and people will hear about it because it'll spread like wildfire. Somebody turned a thousand dollars into ten thousand dollars. Someone turned eight hundred dollars into twenty eight hundred dollars. Unthinkable wealth. Unthinkable wealth where it's made. They're just going to roll it. They're going to roll it because they feel invincible. And the way we go, here come even more risky bets. You folks have got to be focused as assassins that you are. And remember, <clears throat> the victim is coming to you. You don't chase the victim. 
They're coming to you. You're in your perch and you're going to pick off deals and profits left, right, and center. You're going to take class 17 and you're going to go, okay, I see what he's talking about. I know what, I know what he means by this. I, I created some condors and I made some money. I created some additional condors and now I'm not making money on these condors for whatever reason. I, I'm not quite right on my, on my calls or my puts. I'm not quite right on the positioning here. What am I doing wrong? Uh, and then Uncle Bruce is going to show you class 17 and you're going, oh, that's right. I keep, I keep forgetting. I'm pushing the, I'm trying to push my condor to make me money. No, you don't have to do that. You have to reassess how you are creating your contracts why you're creating your contracts, how long you're going to create contracts, how low you are going to ma make the risk factor, how conservative you can get doing this. You do not have to be aggressive on option writing. You have to be the opposite. You got to be the George Costanza each and every time. And we're going to go through this. You're going to get smarter. You're going to get more educated and you're going to be waiting with bated breath for the next Monday to show up so that you can make the correct moves. Now, some of you are doing very well without my help, and I congratulate you, and I keep encouraging you, keep doing it. Don't stop now. Make the money. Take in your profits and do well. Thank you. Well done. But for others of you who are, you've won and you've made some trades, but now you know, some of these trades aren't working out like you thought. What is the matter? Is the market changed or have you changed? Where are we at here? And um, again, for those of you who want a one-on-one -on -one to assess your portfolio, your performance, your results in private, I'm more than happy to, to be here. You just let me know you want to have a one-on-one. -on -one. We'll set it up. But lesson 17 might be the kind of lesson that will help you, really help you assess, oh, that's what's going on. Oh, shoot, I forgot that. Or yeah, gosh darn it, I should have done it this way instead of that way. Or I I made a slight change because I thought I could do it better and it's not happening. Darn it all, I've got to make adjustments. There are ways to fix bad trades. And I can't do it all in five minutes. It's going to take a class. And so join us if you dare. Join us for class 17. Make a donation on PayPal. Send me a private email. Bruce, I'm in. Uh, put me down and here's my email address as you can see make sure you send me the link there and when you send me the finalized version of the class here's the link that i want it sent to and we'll see if we can make you richer okay it's nothing personal it's just money thank you all alex neat neat alberto neat neat steven thank you all for the neat emojis um what's going on here um bw almost 5 million volume on ai in the first 15 minutes suck in the gamblers that want to buy the dip from yesterday's fud drop already 6000 contract volume on $30 strikes expiring this friday rugman unbelievable luca i was setting up a 7 ai deep into money calls for 15 i was already and in intended upselling these calls instead of buying them, Alberto, th that is me, uh, Luca. I was so I was with the seven naked calls for 2026 20, strike 15. Once I realized I had to scramble to buy them back, lost a grant. A uh, JR, um, Luca, not to worry. Um, I think most of all have been there, even Uncle B. Luca, my stupid finger hit the sell and not buy. Uh, Splair, since yesterday evening before the evening bell, AI is very volatile. Luca, oh yeah, JR, I was like ready to score. Luca ended up like a Moron, uh, white feather. Luca, don't feel too bad. I've made plenty of dumb mistakes. JR, I set up a reverse iron condor once. I couldn't figure out what had happened. But when I did, I, I just lost a few bucks. Distressing move, but a learning experience. Marcus, I am number 97 on the thumbs up meter. Alex, so far, stinker hit at 651. Next target, 641. Sniper me, baby. Give it to me. Brian, number 98. On the thumbs up meeting, uh, a meter. Good morning, Bruce. Thank you, Brian. Volume on AI at 6 million already. Daily average is 8 million. Did you guys discuss the AI cliff jump yesterday? I haven't talked about it yet. I'm getting to it. Marcus, the craziest thing that just happened to me, I sold Apple 119, 190 call on Thursday for 702. Just uh, got assigned on it. Three days later, someone gave up 600 bucks in time premium to buy Apple at 190 unbelievable uh beautiful apple is trading at 190 a share right now and marcus just got paid 107 
197.02 on it. Not bad, huh? Uh, you got to love this business, Marcus. I had um, I had to triple check this and make sure I was seeing this right. Uh, Splare, looks like it's still a, an okay day for TTWO and AI showing us green, but they are still far away from yesterday's number while TTWO had a high of the week today. Welcome all to the party, everybody. Uh, BWAI, want to see a stock trying to get out of a... Uh, go out for a substitute fill-in Acapulco Cliff Diver. Watch out below. This is why Uncle Bruce mentions to let the first hour of the market figure itself out. There you go. That's I don't know how many times I've had to say it, but thank you. And welcome all to the party. We're 655 on SoFi right now. The Dow's off 77 points. We're uh, sitting at uh, GameStop down 38 cents at 1242. SoFi at 655 down 7. Low on SoFi today, 6 45. You just uh, put your stink bids in, let it come to you. If it comes, it comes. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't matter. It's all good. Uh, we've got um, what? Uh, SoFi uh, down seven. Moving on. Moving on. Apple 190.90. Netflix down 229. Adobe down 36 cents. AI at 28.93, up 89 cents. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk AI. AI 28.93, up 89 cents. Yesterday during the session. A, a story came out that AI was going to do some layoffs. And there was a sell-off of stock that announced, uh, that was just a hit, um, uh, that hit the market very, very quickly. And the stock had gone from something like, uh, let me do, just double check here. There we go. One week ago. I think the stock was in the 31, the 32 neighborhood. And it did a, one of those dips down into the 27, 28 neighborhood very quickly. And now here we are back to 29 again and jumping about. You have to understand something about this company and this stock, AI, okay? Hang on. Let me get this on my big-ass iPad because it's not uh, it's not going to work on my phone. Here we go. AI, okay, 2890, up 86. Um, we have 114 million shares in existence. Not 1 billion shares. 114 million exist. 101 million can trade. Only 100 million. This is like GameStop. When GameStop went nuts, it only had 54 million it could trade. This one has 100 million it can trade. There are 36 million shares shorted officially on AI. 36 million out of 101 that can trade. This is a very, very high number of stocks that are shorted. All right. So, 7.3 million traded today. That is 7% of what could possibly trade in the free float. All right. The moment the rumor came out that the company was going to do layoffs, the shorters got all excited because they're sitting on a ton of paper that they're short. If the stock goes up a dollar, 36 million shares are short. That's a $36 million paper loss to all the shorters. This stock goes up $10 a share from here. They lose $360 million. This stock goes up $30 a share from here. They lose a billion dollars. Okay, think GameStop. Think GameStop. If this stock goes up $100 from here to $130 a share, the shorters will lose $3.6 billion. Remember Melvin Capital? $3.6 billion. These guys have millions of reasons to crush this market every chance they can. Here's the problem. They aren't able to crush the stock to five bucks a share. GameStop was crushed all the way down to two dollars and eighty cents. These guys can't get it under 25-ish. It, it won't back off because there are buyers on the other side going, I'm a long-termer. I'm not interested in just this quarter. I'm not interested in just this next six months for AI. I'm interested in C3 AI Inc. for the next five to 10 years. Their thinking is that AI is going to bring out so software and going to get their piece of the AI action that is going to bring their shares to a couple hundred bucks a share. On top of that, they're thinking, this goes to 130 a share. Uh, those shorters are down $3.3 billion. This goes to $230 a share. They're down $6.6 .6 They are bankrupt. 
they are bought out. This market starts to go up quickly. They get bought in. And there will be a momentum move to take it to 130 a share to 230. That is the thinking on AI, some of AI's investors. They're long-term holders and they're not going to be shaken out. Even with this rumor of a layoff, people thought, oh, they might go to business. Oh, they're done for. What everyone keeps forgetting, and the shorters are not going to remind you of this little bit of information. They're not going to tell you this news. Uh, or reality is that the company is sitting on a bunch of cash. They have a bunch of cash in their bank account. Uh, they're sitting on uh, 750 million cash as of July 31st of this year. They they have uh, uh, a cash and asset and, and short term assets. Their um, um, uh, assets, their total assets, are something like a billion dollars. And their total liabilities are 156 million dollars. So they're 850 million to the 850 uh, uh, a million dollars to the good uh, in value. Um, they are selling product. They are certainly going to cut expenses when necessary and where necessary, of course. But they're sitting on a mountain of money. They are not in trouble financially. And so the long termers are going. You're not shaking me up. There's no way in hell you're shaking me up, pal. You can you can jump on the stock all you want, but you're not going to crush it because there's a buying wall at 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. There's a buying wall there, and you're not going to get this thing down. Only 100 million in existence. You can't you cannot crush this market. You want to short another 20 million and go to 55 million short? Go knock yourself out because that means Half of the free flow is shorted. I mean, oh, this is a recipe for a shot. These guys are maxed out on their shorts. They've, they've maxed out the number. You can't short anymore. If the buying keeps coming in on this AI, nibbling, nibbling, and nibbling keeps coming in, it will go higher because there will be some shorts who will begin to lose their nerve. Now, yes, it's all dependent on one really good thing. From time to time, it is incredibly important we get a good earnings result come out from the uh, from the stock. Now, a, uh, AI comes out on the 28th, a week today. AI reports their latest quarter, a week today. So, yes, can there be volatility on AI stock for the next seven days? Of course. It won't trade Thursday. We're closed. We'll trade Friday half a day. So, you know, there's a day and a half of very little trading coming up. So today it's active. Tomorrow... Nothing Thursday, a little bit on Friday, then Monday, Tuesday, and then away we go on earnings day. So could AI get crushed by the shorters if they don't deliver uh, good, gigantic quarterly results? Maybe. But what about this? What if the company says, yeah, look, um, at last quarter, um, we, we, we met our expectations uh, slightly below expectations or whatever, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Uh, we're, we're here to re release the numbers, of course. Yeah, here they are. Uh, but here's what we are going to talk about on our conference call. Uh, we have 25 new clients that we've signed up for software programs that we're delivering to these guys in the next 6 to 12 months. We uh, uh, expect our future numbers to be 15% even higher than we thought 6 months ago or 30% higher. They may give the, up, the, the guidance way higher than thought. That could run the stock. This is what I'm what I'm looking at. I, I'm not looking at um, um, a situation where the shorters are going to get caught with their pants, their pants down, sitting on the toilet. I, I'm not actually looking for that. It could happen anyway, but that's not what I'm after. That's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is for the company to say, um, uh, we have a bunch of money in the bank. We have no debt. Um, we're watching our expenses very closely. Uh, we will lay off employees and turn around and hire them back on a contract basis, keep our overheads low. Uh, but our next year and two years and three years path of growth is phenomenal. These shorters, they've been around for a while anyway, and they're very vocal about how much they hate us. Uh, but we don't care about those guys. We don't have to care about those guys because our business will more than justify a $100 share price, a $500 share price, a $1,000 share price a decade from now, whatever their thinking is. Now, they're not going to talk like that. I can talk like that. They're not going to talk like that.
But keep an eye on this uh, this uh, volatility situation because shorters will take any advantage they can get their hands on to crush the market and hope they crush the spirit of the long-term player. I think the problem for uh, the AI shorter, the AI investor is a meme investor. They're like GameStop. They're the long-termers. And they're going to hold this stock. They're not going to give it up. And they're not going to be shook out. They're not going to kick them out of here. Uh, the other thing to remember about AI is that uh, down the road uh, from, from when they went public uh, back in 2020, they were $160 a share at one time. Early days, they were $150, $160 a share. So this $29 value that we're at now, $29 pricing, is a fraction of where the stock once was. So to get back to $160 is kind of like where it started at. Uh, that's kind of what I'm wondering about the uh, stock here. I'm kind of thinking that uh, the AI shares could easily do a $50, $60 ballpark move and shake out a bunch of shorters there. From 60 to 130, they'll bunt, they'll kick a bunch more out. And from 130 to 230, 6 billion in losses for the shorters. If they're still in there, I don't know if they can, if they got that kind of chutzpah. But kids, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how over leveraged or under leveraged uh, uh, shorts are on derivatives that don't trade on the, uh, the open markets. I, I don't know that number, but again, I am, I am convinced there are, Billion dollar plus hedge funds trying to hold down AI, and there are thousand heirs, thousand dollar people, ten thousand dollar investor, fifty thousand dollar investor buying this up, and they're not going to give it back. And eventually, the the dam breaks, and away we, we saw it on GameStop. We might see it here. There you go. That's 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 my story. That's where I'm at, and I'm I'm comfortable with the with the story at the moment. All right. Okay. Uh, what else is going on? Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Way to go, Marcus, on the Apple contract. Well done being exercised. That is unbelievable. Um, uh, who else is here? Uh, BW is saying, SoFi, they wiped the um, November 24 calls from 7 to 8.5 off the option board. Now it seems on the put side, the 6.5 is down to 5.5 is next on the chopping block. JR, yeah, Uncle Bruce, but what caused the pop in AI in the opening hour? Probably just exuberant buying, maybe. I don't know. Maybe the first wave of buyers are excited that this is a dip. I'm getting in. I don't know. Then the shorters hit it. I, I don't know. JR, did I hear the door just open? Good morning, Auntie Jen. Good morning, <laughs> <laughs> He's listening. Uh, Brian, JPM, uh, WF, and Bank of America hit with a negative rating for Moody's. Can you explain what that means, Uncle B? Is this normal for a recession or weak economy? So JP Morgan, uh, is that Western Financial? I'm not sure. And BOA. Um, you, might get, you, you might get a scenario where because rates have topped out and might stay here a while, that uh, that uh, loan delinquencies might be rising for some credit card holders. So outfits like these might be caught with some debt that uh, is going to go into delinquencies, and they might be worried about that. Or um, the the uh, Moody's, Moody's people are thinking that we have a slowing economy, which means slower demand, lower demand for loans. Or these entities are not going to lend out money like before as aggressively because of the, what they're asking and their lenders, the borrowers, sorry, don't qualify for the loans. And they may find that these, these analysts may be saying, these guys are not uh, uh, going to be as profitable next year because there just isn't as much good quality business for them to get. It could be a combination of all of that. Splair, with TTWO, it's definitely much easier somewhere in December. Maybe to start the decade of waiting is over. Brian, Wells Fargo, Bruce, it's, it's not Western Financial. Gotcha. As you can tell, I don't follow Wells Fargo on a second-by-second -second basis. Uh, but again, retail bankers, the, these are retail. Uh, two of them are retail, Bank of America and Wells Fargo. And it might be that uh, the retail side. But on J.P. Morgan's side. Maybe their wealth management won't be as lucrative. Uh, again, Moody's has their reasons, um, and they adjust their 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 uh, ratings accordingly. And it could well be that uh, if the U.S. Treasuries are not getting AAA ratings because the U.S. government spends more than it brings in, and the Congress is dysfunctional, maybe some of the banks can't be rated as high as government. Uh, maybe that's what it is. It it, be, it could be a bit of a um, contagion thing. 
Many reasons, Brian. Many, many reasons. Thank you all for being here. We have 106 thumbs up. If you're happy that and Auntie Jen... You know, if you're happy that Auntie Jen has come to say hi to us, uh, maybe it's time to hit the thumbs up button and let her know. Maybe what the thumbs up meter does in the next five minutes is a direct reflection of how you like Auntie Jen or not. <laughs> is that, remember the, uh, uh, there's Mad Magazine that buy this magazine or I'll shoot this dog. Buy this, yeah, buy this magazine or we're going to shoot this dog. That little puppy with a guy with a gun to yeah. its head. You better buy this magazine or we're going to kill it. Uh, we're not kidding. Jen, are you getting all excited for class number 17? So excited. Calm down, Jen. <laughs> you know that lesson's going to be from Palm Desert, California. Well, and you know, the, I mean, the good part for me is that I just have to show up. I don't have to do any pre-planning or anything like that. See, Jen has it easy. She, <laughs> she, she, she gets to hang with you guys for a couple of hours. That's right. And uh, and address any of the comments it's you're making, the comments. questions. Yeah. Yep, that's true. And then she gets to kind of interrupt me in the middle of my spiel say hey, hey, hey hold up there buddy yeah, hold up yeah. you're talking too back, fast back it up there, back, back, back up the truck mister back up the <laughs> truck and uh, re re show us again what that means mm -hmm. uh that's what she does do that with, with a different example splare good morning <laughs> auntie jen the neat 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 alex uh yeah, if i'd known that that, that was the game i wouldn't have given up my thumb so early ah. i i would have held up until she showed up <laughs> then i would have given up you, i didn't alex. know there you go thank you alex right on pal <laughs> Appreciate you, buddy. Nice of you to be here as always. Uh, well, you know, class 17 is going to be held December 9th, Saturday at noon uh, from Palm Desert, California. So if you're in, Ca in New York, it's noon. If you're in California, it's 9 in the morning. For us, it'll be 9 in the morning when you're we do that Hawaii. class. You're in Hawaii. Oh. What is it, 5 a.m. or something? Oh. Four hours behind? I don't, even, I don't even know. I have no idea. You scratched the side of your nose. I know. I got. I got. I had something... Hanging there, that, that was, side. yeah, there was something. No, you've got like a little mole there that you love to scratch. Bothering me. Uh, this cancer has to be scratched it's away. It's a tumor. It's a tumor. It is it's not a, a tumor. tumor. <laughs> Splare, Uncle Bruce, this works only with the second thumb option, the thumb down against Uncle Bruce for Auntie Jen. Uh, oh. <laughs> there you go. How, you how am I to know this? How did yeah, I know? How did, the Dow is off 60. Measure, yeah. There you go. The Dow is off 67 <laughs> points right now. Uh, the S&P is down 12, 12 and a half. NASDAQ down 88 or so. Um, we're down two-thirds of a point on NASDAQ, about a quarter of a point on the others. Oil is off uh, 38 cents to 77.22. Um, it should be getting quieter and quieter and quieter this week. Uh, but then again, with fewer participants in the market, you can get much higher and lower gyrations right. of volatility. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those, this is good or bad. I, I'm not sure yeah. how to play this. When you get those half to sells or half to buys. Um, exactly. And you the get, volumes aren't there. See, on AI, you get a wave of buying from AI buyers catching shorters with their pants down. And you don't have a bunch of sellers lying around or, or a bunch of you know sellers lying around to want to get out. Yeah. All of a sudden, the shorters have to buy back in a in a reduced liquid market. That runs the stock even higher. People are busy watching football and eating turkey. Mm -hmm. And then they got their phones and their alerts oh. are going off. Going, whoa, my AI. Oh, tofurky. what's going on? So, I don't know. A tofurkey. A tofurkey? Yeah. A tofu furkey? A tofurkey. A tofu furkey. <laughs> we love we love U.S. Thanksgiving up here. We really do. And here in Canada, I loved we get, it down there. We, oh, we loved it down there too. We get such a kick out it's of it here such in Canada. A big deal. Yeah. It's a huge deal. It is a big deal. You're shopping at Costco this week. You know. Oh. You're shopping at any grocery store today. Oh my God, is it oh, not so? No, wait, wait, wait till Wednesday. <laughs> oh, it's insanity. Tomorrow's Wednesday. It's insanity. Uh, the airports and 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 uh, folks coming in from all over the place. Oh, it's on unbelievable. It's unreal. Uh, and and tomorrow, Christmas starts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, you you tomorrow, all all those lights are switched on. <laughs> you all know at the Costco store the Christmas decorations have been out already. It's been insane. So yeah. Daryl got your PayPal uh, donation. Uh, let me know what you're doing. Um, absolutely, we'll take care of you. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, da, da, da. Brian, it looks like AI wants to go back to 31, Bruce. 
That's what that thing wants to do. It's a 29.25 up 121 today on the AI. Splare, wouldn't it? Wouldn't this keep the algorithm still moving? Maybe to people like that dislike everything. Maybe <laughs> Beach Boy is here. I am number 110. Antigen thumbs ups. Leave the puppy alone. <laughs> Don't shoot the puppy for Don't God's shoot sake. The puppy. We love the puppy. <laughs> Please buy the magazine. Don't shoot the puppy. I'm buying All the magazine. All right, Beach Boy. We'll be nine. We'll be nine. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, all of you from yeah. around the world. Uh, so great to have you here with us. Uh, it's unbelievable. Jen and I are sitting here in Calgary, Alberta, and we're talking to people in Israel. We're oh, talking man. to people in Germany. It's uh, it's seven above right now. Is it? Yeah. Plus seven it, Celsius? This is it. <laughs> is, is it going to get ugly? Yeah, this is it now. Let me see. Tomorrow winter comes. All right. Right now it's 45 <laughs> Fahrenheit yeah. out here. Uh, we're hitting a high of 51 uh, today at yeah. 3 p.m. We'll hit 51. And, and then, then cloud over. conditions with all day. Wind gusts up to 32. Something's coming. And it's not good. It's not it's a tropical not a heat wave. <laughs> Something's coming because tomorrow's high is 36. Oh, and tomorrow is that fun day where we start with rain. Oh. And then we go below freezing. Oh. And then it snows oh. on top of the ice. Thursday, 32 for the high. Zero Celsius yeah, is our so high. <laughs> Thursday, don't, don't take the car out and put the, put the grippers oh. on when ne you're walking. Ne next week, Thursday, the day before we get out of here, uh, it's sunny and 34 for the yes. high. We're crossing our fingers that Friday is sunny and high of 35, 40. It still wants snow on the ground. It can snow on the 2nd, 3rd <laughs> of December for all I care. You can block in this city and, and, and snow it in. Not between now and the first of December. That's I want, the I want the roads open, easy access. That's right. To the airport. want that runway nice and dry. Runway and nice get and the dry. hell out of here. We are hope. Oh, Splair here in Germany. Christmas is running since September, Bruce. Uh, occasionally Christmas oh, with yeah. pumpkins, but mostly Christmas. <laughs> uh, Luca, Christmas ciao, <laughs> Auntie Jen from Luca. Ciao, Luca. How you doing, there, pal? Welcome to the party, pal. Uh, we're having fun here today. Yeah. Uh, we got 139 people watching, and we finally broke the 100 barrier on the thumbs up meter. Woo -woo. Uh, like because like Beach Boy said, he was 110. We're at 114 there you thumbs go. ups, everybody. Thank you. Well, it's a Tuesday. Uh, you know, we appreciate it. We, Monday. we know it's going to be you quiet this keep week. Going. It's only Tuesday. We know the views are going to be down this week. That's why I beg oh, so yes. we're begging so hard for thumbs ups. People are out to uh, yeah. having family time it's good well that's right it's it's, that's what it's all about one of my favorite snl characters is drunk uncle drunk uncle <laughs> from thanksgiving <laughs> oh I the other character the uncle. same the same actor played another character but did you did you hear did, oh yeah yeah did you hear the word did you hear what it was and it would make up headlines off of headlines it was so oh, yeah. hilarious <laughs> yeah totally uh mispronouncing Mr. names Mr. and yeah. Just uh, he was good. What was the name of that actor? I can't um, tell you. Yeah, he, I will admit it. I he can't is tell good. You. He is good stuff. Yeah. Uh, but who anyway, who was Drunk Uncle? Someone here might be faster than you on the internet. We'll find out. Uh, BW saying, Uncle Bruce, I'm west and south of you, and I got red sky in the morning. Watch out, Calgary. Oh, we had a beautiful sunrise this uh -oh. morning. Oh, Beach Boy, oh, yeah. the weather gods are saying, Leave the puppy alone, Uncle Bruce. Leave <laughs> it alone. Uh, Brian BW, that is funny. I just texted my wife to look out back at the sky. It was beautiful this morning. <laughs> BW, Auntie Jen, we owe number 88 on Calgary, a bit of payback for McCain. McCann. And we didn't take the chance last night with the Flames in town. Oh. A loss in overtime on a finally good night of play for the Kraken. The boys came back. The Flames uh, came back to win that game. Because uh, we don't win in overtime. We don't win overtime year. games. We we seem to lose shootouts in overtime. Oh. We got two points. Yeah. Uh, Moynihan. Bobby Moynihan. Bobby Moynihan is, is drunk the uncle. There he is. Yeah, that's yeah. drunk uncle. That's yeah, that's <laughs> good. There he is. Let's see if I can show that. It's hilarious. Drunk uncle. Drunk uncle. He was great. <laughs> and look at all the times he was on. Like many. Ton, tons, tons. Uh, no, I no. Mean, many, many times he many, was on. Many, many times. Here we go. Oh, yeah. How many appearances did Drunk Uncle have? <laughs> he was a fave. <laughs> <laughs> 2011, 12, 12, 13, 13, 13, 13 15. 2022. Drunk uncle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Moynihan. A great actor. A great character. A great comedian. <laughs> 
And then, of course, uh, he did the his, other. His catchphrase? Uh, immigrants. Immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk on Oh, gosh. Yeah. And then did you did you hear? Did, did, did... Yeah. Ooh, I heard I heard I heard something. <laughs> yeah. Who'd you hear from? Jimmy two times. Uh, over at the uh so and so bar. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> oh no, no, no. Here's a headline from Barron's that says former Congressman Manchin sells for seven point six million, a record price in Charlotte, North Carolina. How can a congressman on a hundred and eighty thousand dollar salary? own a 7.6 million dollar house he comes from a family of wealth really you don't know what he did before really? he was a congressman really <laughs> is that true i, I wonder that about that true? i wonder about the most a record now, price for a house don't go making assumptions drunk uncle <laughs> immigrants that's what it is okay <laughs> oh no 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 you might be too drunk drunk no a BW eight number eighty eight when you were all when all when you all were at home last week number eighty eight put McCain's or McCann's face in the ice took a ten minute major and was ejected and set out a game paybacks are coming at some point so oh. somebody did something to number eighty eight uh, oh. we didn't see, I didn't see it I, 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 I one of our watching. guys I don't, I don't know Auntie Jen from Alberta oh. how you doing. How are you doing, Alberto? How are you, you doing, Alberto? How are you doing? BW, NHL versus pro soccer. Discuss the pros and cons on the slow market day. No. Oh. <laughs> JR, oh, that was an easy one. Congressional insider training, which they won't put a stop to. Funny, huh? It's isn't, weird. Isn't that odd? Isn't that, but I'm I already, they have lots of committees. Oh, they got lots of committees. Lots uh, of I'm committees. already up five dollars on a written Matterport call. I think I'll use this week's time Ooh. depreciation instead of closing at thirteen percent profit. Says Splair. Well, there wait you go, else, Splair. I'm taking the money. I'm Giddy so up. proud of Splair. Look at that. Splair getting smarter. Walking getting the better. walk, talking the talk. That's right. That's, That's right. So That's right. Splair's going to be rich. Splair's going to be rich. Among yeah, a number of other viewers. Proud. So we were. That's I was showing. Up, I was showing off the house that was for sale in Vero Beach, Florida, that oh, I was yeah. talking about yeah. the other day. Like um, Del Rio's uh, former house. And explaining to the viewers, it's one of four that he owns. Wow. Yeah. No, so if, you, if this is the small one. For it's sixteen the cabin, million, the cottage, the cottage, the, the <laughs> summer cottage, six thousand square feet, seven bedrooms, salt water pool. Oh, the cottage. That's one of those Beach words front. that tells people uh, which part of Canada you're from, and I don't know if it's the same. Um, we have cabins, and out east they have cottages. It's it's just one of those words that shows well, where yeah. you're from. Yeah, I guess. Um, do you have soda or do you have pop? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, in the fifties, it was, uh, it began in the 1950s that residents of Toronto and Southern Ontario re region, they would uh, buy uh, lots on lakefront in Northern part of Ontario, not extreme North Ontario. Because of the Great Lakes, they got all that Two hours lot. North of Toronto. 100 miles, 150 miles, north, just North Bay, Georgian Bay. They would buy lakefront property and spend a month a year, like a summer month mm -hmm. up there. This is the, these are the days where <clears throat> dad uh, could carry the family on his salary, generally speaking. Yeah. A family of four, the ideal family of four. And... Um, uh, they would own. They would. They would own the lot. They would have a cabin built. They might even build it themselves over several summers. Mm -hmm. And after ten years, you you've got these uh, cabins with these little docks, you know, off their off their property. And it wouldn't be. It would not be uncommon that on a long weekend, uh, they would head up there in uh, in early July, and and mom and dad and the kids would go up, and uh, uh, they'd be up there for about a week. We could have two weeks, and and dad would leave mom and the kids at the cabin mm -hmm. and dad would go back to Toronto and, and work uh, for a couple of weeks. And then on the next long weekend, the August long week, head up to the cabin and, and, and get mm -hmm. the long weekend in, grab the family and then come back home. Yeah. And so the kids would be up North for 
month, month and a half. Yeah. Frolicking in the lake, uh, at the cottage, the hiking, sail and swimming, you know, yeah. poking bears, looking for blueberries, whatever, <laughs> uh, catching I poison IV, whatever, uh, <laughs> leaving mom to you know be terrorized by the kids. But all the <laughs> the lake would be surrounded by cabin, cabin, cabin. So the friends would be friends, some your summer friends, and yeah. maybe your your home friends. That was quite common. But uh, then in the uh, in the nineties uh, and the two thousands. There were no more lots for sale uh, in these mm. lake communities because it was they were all sold off. They, so now there was there was you could buy develop cabins or cottages off the lake, but they would go for a fraction of the price versus a water view. Today, in southern Ontario or northern Ontario cottage country, let's call it, there are lots going for millions. The land is yeah, more valuable. Yeah, really condos, hotels, and, and worth more money than the cabins themselves. And so the original owners have turned yeah, over. The over taxes the, are starting to kill. That's right. So over time, the the owners from the fifties and sixties passed it on to the kids or sold off, mm -hmm. and then the kids flipped it later. And so now you have very few cabins left from the original cottage country up there, uh, and you now you're now seeing. These kinds of houses I was just showing you this morning, you're seeing $5 million cottages showing up, mm -hmm. $10 million cottages showing up at some of these lakes uh, in Ontario. And uh, that's the evolution of the world. That's just yeah, the way it is. That's just the way it goes. Um, that's just the way it goes. What have I got here? What have I got here? Um, they would be the same. BW, Spider goes down. Splare, I will already be happy if I get to Las Vegas. There is this artificial lake around it. Houses actually cost 500000 It's okay. It looks great. Same in Palm Springs. Double D, we Uncle Bruce, Bruce email easy. sent. Uh, Brian, uh, so are the markets closed on Thursday this week or Friday? Thursday. I think we're closed Thursday and we have reduced hours Friday. Brian, yeah. might be a good week for time depreciation. Nothing happening possibly exactly. half of the week. Splair, as far as I was reading, Thursday closed Friday, short day. Um, the Credit Savage of Wall Street. Uh, number 19 here, just waking up since the kitties were up late last night. Oh, oh. We had a great dinner and lots of fun last night. Since I rolled most of my covered calls yesterday, I really don't have to care about what the market does oh, today. Um, how about that? Uh, that's uh, so a savage is saying, a player is saying, that's why I expect today most volume at the most volume at least. So I already closed my 170 spot. Mm -hmm. TWTO calls at 52 with a little gain. A uh, credit savage is saying, ah, and good morning, my simple, simple. Fellow simpletons and degenerates. <laughs> good morning, good morning from Credit Savage. I'll, I'll get it up. Uh, we're down to 609.85 on Adobe. <laughs> Adobe has gone from 615 to 609. Again, for those of you who did roll, great. You didn't? No problem. Uh, you don't have to today. Let the market show you what it wants to do. We're down 100 on the Dow. We're down 21 on S&P. We're down 130 on NASDAQ. NASDAQ is 0.9% of a percentage point. S&P down 20 points, which is half a point. The Dow point, about a third of a point right now. Um, we got the oil down 39 cents a, a barrel. So we got the market backing off. So looking at some of our favorites, we see um, Enphase down 67, Spiders down 210, Q's down 369, GameStop off 53 cents, SoFi 649 down 12, Apple down 112, Netflix off 18, Adobe down 264, AI at 28.93, up still 89 cents, but falling. NVIDIA down 10 bucks, 493.90. Tonight after the bell, NVIDIA reports. Tesla up 485 to 240. Rocket Lab down 12, Matterport down four and a half, Smart Rent up three and a half. We got um, Unity down a buck, Google up 52, Moderna down 226, Cisco down 53, Pfizer down, up a penny, IBM down 10 cents, HBQ down 14, Microsoft down 530 to 372. We backed off on Microsoft. ME down five cents back to 85. We got the 90 last night. Now we're at 85 in the M. So frustrating on the ME. Amazon down four bucks. Home Depot down 280. Manning Semiconductors down three dollars. Goldman down 220. Boeing down 23 cents. Nothing going on there. Meta down 377. The old Facebook. Target up 26. JP Morgan down four cents. Costco up 36 cents. Walmart down 87. Disney down 58 cents. American Airlines down 30. DraftKings down 62. AMC down 34. And Royal Caribbean. Down a buck seventy to one hundred four eleven. So more red showing definitely all over the place. And surprising, 
no, we're way overbought here. We should see some pullback. So keep an eye on everything, kids. Are we having a front or what? Brian, top of the morning to you, yes, says Brian to Credit Savage. Brian, uh, Credit Savage says, most of my stocks are red. But my covered calls are all green. <laughs> lovely. Uh, just lovely. I hope y'all too advanced. Uh, you all two of you, you all advanced on the AI and you uh, Unity Pops yesterday rolled up. Lots of gamblers wanted to donate to us yesterday, and they're so kind. They're and so yes, kind. Uh, the dollars are flowing. Splitter bought back a December call written last week at 97, closed today at 77. Thanks, markets. Now for that one, a little different call would be good. Well, good. way to go, Splitter. <laughs> Splitter making nickels and dimes everywhere. Adobe 609.22 down 350 a share on a Adobe, uh, interesting there. Uh, we've got uh, Dean saying we bought a place in cottage country in 2020, just before the prices went insane. Right? I yeah. wanted a three-season cottage. My wife wanted a lakefront house. Uh, we got a year-round lake house for way more than I wanted to spend. Go figure. Yeah, <laughs> but but uh, hopefully. Yeah, they bought it at the right time. A lot of people bought lakefront and, and cottage country homes because of COVID. They wanted to, they were now going to work from home. Yeah. They're figuring, if I'm going to work from home, if I can work from home six months of the year to nine months of the year in cottage country, yeah, and only part of the time back back in my house, I so might do As long as you got into it, that. you can do it. And a lot of people decided, <laughs> you know what I'm doing, Bruce? I sell, I am sold my house in my Toronto area. I bought a cottage in cottage area, and then I bought a condo in Florida. So in the winter, I'm in Florida. In the summer, I'm in cottage country. And between the two, I adjust my, uh, yeah. my trap. Because I work from home now. I'm no longer an employee in a cubicle there were, anymore. There were mm -hmm. parts of uh, BC close to us, some of these little hamlets that didn't have Wi-Fi yet. They they had to rely on cable internet. And so their internet was very spotty. Yeah. But yeah. you're deep in the primordial oh, yeah. forest. That's a, that's a <laughs> so, whole other existence. It's yeah. really nice that you want to look out and see a deer in your front yard and go hiking, but right. you need the internet. Now, there are some folks who, of course, are picking phone. up satellite internet. Uh, they invest, if you're living full time out in the boonies, yeah. they'll invest in a satellite system. Very you are, you're gonna pay uh, to each his own can you close that window it no. has gotten cold in here <laughs> real fast um it's lovely. It's, it's wind. It's jr yeah that wind we talked about uh jr the greatest average of wall street i was able to pull off some cash they left on the table what a deal huh lobo blast bruce i'm 124 in your thumbs up meter splare um, found a good one, 25 cent difference. And I get additional $30 for three weeks. Way to go, Splare. The Credit Savage. Okay, I'm obviously too tired. I can't even write today. My covered calls are making money and the market can do whatever it wants. Short week. Anyways, I'm going back to bed. Have a nice day, Uncle Bruce and Have Auntie a nice Jen. Sleep. Way a to nice go, Credit up. Savage. Have a good one, buddy. Thanks for joining us. We're down 370. We're down 370 on Adobe Bye, now. Everybody. And Jen is saying goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Hit the thumbs up meter. We are now at thumbs ups. 125 because you love Auntie Jen. There you go. Hey, thank you, Auntie Jen. There you go. Giddy up, everybody. Welcome to the party. Uh, we're down four on Adobe. We're dropping. Uh, the market is down 100 on, on the Dow now. We're down 21 on S&P. We're down 132 on NASDAQ. We're going lower on the markets at the moment. That's what I see happening here. The triple Qs are down 384. Spiders are down 215. GameStop down 51 cents, but SoFi is up. It's at uh, it's down a dime at 652. It won't go down to 645 or lower. It's bounced up again on 11.9 million volume on SoFi. Apple down a buck 20. Netflix down 48. Adobe down four dollars 25 cents. AI holding 29.09 after cratering at 28.11 in the first half hour this morning. It has bounced back. Interesting. Uh, the battle between long and shorts. That's uh, to me. I think it's what it's all about. Nvidia down nine forty six. Tesla is up five bucks at the moment. So welcome to the party, pals. As we are grinding our way through the morning, grinding our way into Thanksgiving break, and uh, a lot of positioning being done all over the place. Jr. says bye bye, Auntie Jen. 
We're all good. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we've been into the show for an hour 53 minutes here. And uh, we have uh, a down dip showing. The question is, is it just going to be around here and we're going to break even on the day? Or are we going to break some technical supports, short-term technicals, and get into a bit of a profit-taking session today or not? I don't know. We'll follow that, of course. Uh, it's what we do. Option writers, happy kids. Uh, well done. Those of you who've done rollovers in the last three days, you took, you took my advisement last week, this week, and you rolled higher on higher priced calls, especially on condors. This is the pullback that can handsomely reward you uh, very quickly, depending on just what this is. If we've topped out a little and we're now going to drift along for a week, a whole bunch of these calls you've managed to move into will depreciate quickly time time is going to kill them out of the money calls will get crushed uh this is all good stuff a uh, splare have a good day everybody i'm taking off enjoy splare bw uncle bruce took profit yesterday rewrote december 23 30s at 228 little run up today not worried but those jan 24 30s look tasty but do i dare going in the money at 2750 and take big premium and wait for more Dippage. Well, again, you know, it's a, you don't have to actually guess. You can make the move, and if you're wrong, you roll over anyway. I mean, so what? Uh, BW uh, AI that that is AI fold arms is good too. I have time and rolling if need be. Life is good. Exactly. It's exactly right. The viewer that mentioned today that they wrote a 190 Apple call received seven odd dollars in premium and got exercised today. Uh, with the stock at 191. <laughs> what? Uh, hello. Thank you very much. We're at 190.32 down a dollar 13 on Apple. Oh, what a beautiful trade that was. Um, you know, if you write GameStop calls for 12.50 uh, and you get exercise tomorrow, but you took a 250 premium, you get 15 dollars for stock trading at 12 something. Do you mind getting exercise? Bring it on. Take me out anytime you want. Uh, so, no, writing in the money calls might force the, the person to take you out, but you want a premium for that trade, not a book value premium, but a real premium. Interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, BW, that is right. So what exactly? Just let the market, dare the market to take you out? I say. Anyway, fun times. We're down 95 on the Dow, 122 on NASDAQ. At the moment, it's not catastrophic, but it is meaningful for those of you who've done rollovers lately. You're looking at premiums shrinking pretty quick here on some of these contracts. That's what we're all about, shrinkage. And if it continues for another week, even better. This market wants to slump now for a whole week, week and a half to the end of the month. Then let it. I don't know what NVIDIA will do tonight. I don't know if NVIDIA will make the markets go higher create a sell-off wave of sell on the news kind of selling i can't i can't answer it but there are a lot of players out there up a lot of money right now who are thinking should i take my money now should i should i sell my adobe shares at 610 609 and run it's the high of the year was 615 here um you know it was 550 not long ago it was 450 not long ago should i should I or should I be greedy and get slaughtered? What's going to happen here? Uh, we're going to find out. Uh, Splare so filled at ha at 112. Way to go, Splare. Well done. Uh, BW making a donation. Hey, pal. Thanks, Uncle B. Best advice live on the markets when not eating bagels, that is. Uh, thank you, BW, so very much. That is Jennifer Hip replacement money right there. Uh, thank you all uh, for just your endless, endless support. Remember, we're doing class number 17, uh, December 9th, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, rollovers. We're going to talk about uh, re resurrecting bad contract trades. We're going to talk about how to score, um, uh, you know, uh, how to get lemonade out of lemons. We're going to be talking about this on Lesson 17. you got a lot to cover here. Um when you're ready to uh, commit to the class for December the 9th, Saturday, make a donation to the PayPal account and send me an email. Let me know you're in to win. 
Uh, thank you, BW. Uh, love you, buddy. Uh, it's beautiful stuff. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, Daryl, I got your email. We got you. We'll take care of you for your uh, for your one-on-one. Uh, -on -one and we got you for class 17 and we'll, we'll get you set up. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, congratulations. And thank you all so much for your support of this channel and never ending. Uh, you guys are absolutely, absolutely wonderful. We love you. Uh, make a pile of money. Uh, just, just make a pile of money out there. Let the market tell you what to do. Uh, don't guess. Let it tell you and make your move there. Um, down now, down 101. S&P down 17. NASDAQ down 118 points. 0.29% um, uh, for the Dow on the drop, 0.39 on S&P and 0.83 on NASDAQ. All three markets red at the moment. All right. Uh, thank you all for uh, for joining in. And these thumbs ups today, uh, absolutely wonderful. 126. Keep them coming if you can. If you're watching on the rerun, help us uh, build that number. Uh, thank you all. Very, 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 very much. Uh, hearts uh, hearts to all of you for being here and uh, being part of the show. Uh, smiling. We love these premiums coming in. And it's party time, baby, uh, when you're able to watch contracts fall off the face of the earth. It doesn't get any better than that. You got to just love it. Thank you, guys. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, we'll join you uh, uh, again tomorrow morning. And don't forget, tomorrow night, um, prime time with Uncle Bruce, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern time, Gold Bagel members. You got a busy day tomorrow. You got your trade alert first thing in the morning. You got your trade alert show after that. We'll be here for the regular show. And then tomorrow night, we're on prime time live. So Gold Bagel members, you're going to join me four times tomorrow where everyone else can only join me once. And so you have four times as much knowledge going forward. That's why you become a Gold Bagel member. You you need the knowledge. Uh, the cab drivers in Britain, in the, in London, they pass the test called the knowledge to be cab drivers, to be an option rider and really score the dough. Get the knowledge. Uh, grab the classes. Join us for class seventeen. Thank you all for your support today. You were the best, Stephen. Thanks, pal. Appreciate it. Splair, thank you, pal. Uh, dude, neat, 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 neat. Uh, Splair. That's the spirit. Neat, 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 neat. Thank you all so much for everything. We'll catch you tomorrow morning first thing, and uh, we'll see if we can make you richer. Okay, guys, have a good one, and we'll talk to you later. From Calgary, Bruce and Jen saying bye for now.